The last nine months witnessed the writing of another chapter in the feud existing between the victims' families and the Grenada 17. Keith Scotland, a Trinidadian attorney, was retained by the Grenada 17 as their lead counsel as they lay claim to innocence. Scotland's argument that Andy Mitchell, Vincent Joseph and Cosmos Richardson were being held unconstitutionally in prison won him the judge's favor and Justice Bran Aline ordered that the three men be released from prison forthwith. That never happened as the state filed for a stay in the execution of the order handed down by Justice Bran Aline. On February 14, 2002, this press conference was called by counsel Keith Scotland on the verdict. The court has given an interim ruling and the order is that they are continued, the effect of it is the continued imprisonment of the three persons I've just mentioned, Cosmos Richardson, Andy Mitchell, and Vincent Joseph, that their continued imprisonment is unconstitutional and that they be released forthwith from prison. Forthwith in law means now. We are contending too that Mr. Aline's interpretation, Justice Aline's interpretation of Section 80 of the Criminal Code is incorrect. Because you see, that section, as I said last week, if a man were to throw a bomb and kill more than one person, then that is one act. But not when a man goes on the fort, for example, and fire different, on different occasions and kill different people. That is not one act within the meaning of Section 80, Subsection 2 of the Criminal Code. So Mr. Aline was clearly wrong. The reaction to this verdict obviously created an air of uncertainty on the island as the victims' families reacted. The, the whole thing is, you know, that the sentences was commuted to life imprisonment. And this wasn't even justice for me. I don't know for other people, but it's not justice for me. Because my husband was innocent. He didn't do anything in Grenada wrong. And he wasn't put on trial. He wasn't given the chance to defend himself. He wasn't, he was just murdered. And up to now, no satisfaction. They still want this element, these murderers. They still want them to walk the street of Grenada without no justice, no nothing, nothing for relatives. We all lost our loved ones. And up to now, not even the bodies we got, not even the remains, we never got the remains that we could give them a proper burial, that we should have a grave where we could put flowers, where we could light candles, nothing. Never happened in this country. On November 1st, the case of the Grenada 17 will once again come up before the Court of Appeal as Scotland will present a constitutional motion challenging that the legal process was unfair. On the Grenada 17 website, the convicted members said, quote, without the evidence of Cletus St. Paul, there could have been no convictions. Therefore, if his evidence was bad, then the convictions are in fact very bad, unquote. The, the matter regarding Richardson, Mitchell and Vincent Joseph, uh, you were supposed to go back in court. Um, what is the status of that matter? That matter was argued on the 21st of July 2002 and uh, we are now awaiting judgment from the Court of Appeal in that matter. We are anxiously awaiting judgment in that matter. In fact, just today I have written to the Registrar in the Supreme Court of Grenada asking about the judgment in that matter because we are anxiously awaiting that because obviously it will determine the status of my three clients in that regard. So the constitutionality issue was brought before the Court of Appeal as well? Yes, all issues that were raised before the Honourable Judge at first instance were also raised before the Court of Appeal, all issues. And now there is a new matter. Yes. Um, could you tell us about that one? Well, I did promise you June for action. But because of the nature of the action, we are now in September, but I did promise that action will be filed with respect to the remainder of my clients, 13 of them, and action has been filed 
yesterday with respect to them. It's also in vain of constitution, so it's a constitutional motion, and it has been filed as of yesterday. So all, uh, it would be how much? It will, would it include um, the three that were filed for already? No, 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 they're already in their separate matter. Okay. 13 of the guys up in okay. there. So 13, 13 uh, what guys. about civil score then? We, uh, my clan is scored in I do not wish to get into her matter. She's not a part of it. Therefore, I do not wish to discuss anything relating to her. She not being a part of the legal action that is being undertaken by the other 13 or the other 3. She's not a part of that at all. But what if the court goes along with Scotland's argument? Would the cry of persons like Leslie Pierre and Lloyd Noel and Teddy Victor be finally noticed as the Grenada 17 would be freed at the expense of the victims of October 19th? If those guys should be tried and convicted for what happened on the fort, why shouldn't the revolution, the PRG 26, be tried for those guys who were killed at Mount Rich in Sartes? For the guy that was killed in Union in St. Mark? For Strong Philip that was gone down in Mount Airy? For the guys who died on the park in, in, Wit the in Queen's Park in June 19. Ni June 19. That was no revolutionaries counter. It was a setup to make the revolution look as though it was under attack. Nobody was charged for that. In fact, they picked up the wrong guys and incarcerated them, Kenny Budlal and others, and they had nothing to do with it. They executed Strong Philip because of that. Strong Philip was not there. So when we're talking about criminals and murderers and so on, people are forgetting that they are using standards that suit them. And to me, that is more unconscionable than the fact of people saying, leave the murderers in jail. It's far more unconscionable. I go to Richmond Hill Prison with our church choir from Guelph every year. Sometimes we go twice a year. So we're part of the, the prison ministry, if you like. And we take a lot of young people. We take some old ones. This year, we took only men. Yet we have a men group in, my, in our church in Guelph. And we go there and we do a service. We sing. We interact we bring refreshments. The persons who go there with me were not in any revolution. They look forward to going and when they go and meet the guys, they see them as no demons. And I usually try and canvas their opinions afterwards. Some of them are surprised that the guys are who they are as they look at. I'm not, don't get me wrong and think that I think they're all little infant Jesus Christ. They did a lot of wrong things. And maybe in that sense, they're paying for the wrong, not in the sense of murder. I have a lot of um, different of opinion on this so-called murder. But another instance that perhaps makes me feel that the Grenada public would talk for a while, but would do not much else, is that three or four years ago, I think it was, when Signal Lamentine got six or eight of them, give him a day off from Richmond Hill, and he took them to the St. Dominic Church in Pedmuta for Mass. And I checked the reaction afterwards. And the people, as the ordinary people in St. David, in St. Dominic's Church, they welcomed them. They were hugging and treating them like they were long-lost brothers. They provided refreshments. It was an open forum, and they were treated like anybody else. I can't remember getting any re reaction where anybody, even after the Mass, was saying anything uncivil or revengeful. Now, clearly there are people out there. There's absolutely no doubt. I've seen some letters in the press. In fact, I've got one this week where people see the 17 as enemies. And that is because the Grenada Revolution became divided in 1983 which culminated in 19th of October. So there was one side, if you would like, the Maurice Bishop side. There was one side called the Codites, or the Code side. It is my view, and Leslie P. and I keep saying that for years, if the Maurice Bishop side didn't get gone down, the Code or Codite side would have gotten gone down. Now that I believe that Bernard Code and Selwyn and so what, the fourth shooting anybody, there guilt was supposedly um, bestowed on them by the fact that they gave orders, so the saying goes. I have a lot of reservation about that. But the point I am making is 
the revolution at that time had divided itself down the middle. And what transpired was not, in my view, the case of murder as we understand it.